Hello everyone and welcome to the weird, scary and horrible parts of humanity. Today we are looking at the deadliest aircraft suicide in Australia, the Connellan Air Disaster. This video makes numerous references to suicide. If you feel suicidal or feel like committing self-harm, please don't forget that you are amazing and so many people care for you and love you. Support services are available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week and 365 days a year. If you are in Australia, call Lifeline on 13 11 14. If you are in New Zealand, call Lifeline on 0800 543354. If you're in the United States of America, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline on 800 273 8255. If you're in Canada, call the Canada Suicide Prevention Service on 1 833 4564 566. If you're in the United Kingdom or the Republic of Ireland, call Samaritans on 116123. If your country hasn't been listed, you will be able to find plenty of resources available online. Don't forget that you are amazing, you are loved, and the world would be so much worse without you, and you cannot imagine the amazing things that you will achieve in the future. Australia has only seen two aircraft suicide attacks in its history, one being in 1982 at Bankstown Airport, a small mainly general aviation and cargo airport which is 26 kilometres in the central business district of Sydney, when a student pilot, 26-year-old Philip Henrik Wozniak, who lived in Narrabeen, New South Wales and was the son of Alexander and Beryl Wozniak with four siblings, crashed a stolen Socata TB-10 Tobago Light Plane into a parked Douglas DC-3 and Piaggio P-166. Wozniak was the only casualty of this accident. Today we are going to explore the deadliest suicide attack, the Connellan Air Disaster. Colin Richard Foreman was born in 1953 in the United Kingdom and attended Colfers School, a co-educational independent day school in Horn Park in Greenwich, London, where he was a choir singer. He migrated to Australia alone in the early 1970s and lived in Australia's second biggest city, Melbourne, where he drove trams. He was considered a shy loner, a misfit, arrogant, and angry, and had a burning desire to head back home to the United Kingdom, but had a shortage of cash and was unable to afford the airfare. To go back to the United Kingdom, he came up with a plan which was destined to fail. In 1974, at the age of 21, he tried to forge a ticket back to his native United Kingdom on a Qantas flight, which is the flag carrier and largest airline in Australia, and at the time Qantas was government owned. Attempting to board a Qantas flight from Melbourne to London, it was found that his ticket had been forged, and he had a criminal conviction for forgery recorded against him. Foreman had a strong desire to become a pilot throughout much of his life, and worked on and off as a tram driver to supplement his income, rarely going out and living off a diet of tripe, determined to save enough money to fulfil his dream. He trained at the New South Wales Nationwide Aviation Space Academy in Cessnock in the Hunter Valley of New South Wales, 154 kilometres from Sydney, the capital of New South Wales. He did not get along well with other training pilots. In November 1975, he obtained a commercial pilot's license, topping his class at the New South Wales Nationwide Aviation Space Academy, and obtained a role with Conair two months later in January 1976. Based in Alice Springs in the Northern Territory, the second largest city in the Northern Territory, and named after its founder Edward Connellan, Conair was founded in 1939 as Survey and Inland Transport before being named Connellan Airways on the 23rd of July 1943, before being named Conair in 1970. The airline served regional cities over the Northern Territory and Western Australia, but by the 1970s it began to suffer financial difficulties. Foreman worked as a second crew on the airline's D. Havilland Doves, where his duties were divided between cabin service and cockpit. However, in reality, he was little more than a glorified flight attendant, and occasionally sat in the cockpit to see how things were done. Hoping to gain a promotion to become a first officer, he undertook an instrument rating test seven weeks after he joined, but failed. It was then that his criminal conviction and forgery came to light, and he was dismissed. On the date of his sacking from Conair, he wrote in his logbook, sentenced to death this date. 
He would later describe the seven weeks with Con Air as the happiest seven weeks of his life and even regularly walked from his home to the airport in his uniform. Dismissed, he found a job with Ord Air Charter based in Kununurra in the Kimberley region in the north of Western Australia. However, this job would only last two months and he was sacked in September 1976. Complaints were made against Foreman as he dived at landing strips, flared late and landed at a higher than normal speed. A disgruntled and angry foreman believed that Roger Connellan, the son of Edward Connellan, and his supervisor at Conair informed Ord Air Charter about his forgery conviction, which led to his sacking. Foreman ended up in Mount Isa in northwest Queensland, living in a one bedroom rented apartment, and by late 1976 was occasionally flying single engine Cessna charter flights for freight and tourists. He was also a member of the Mount Isa Aero Club. However, he was unable to find a permanent job as a pilot and blamed much of this on his dismissal from Con Air. In October 1976, he told a member of the Mount Isa Aero Club and a journalist of the Northwest Star, the local newspaper, if I don't get a job by Christmas, then you will get to know and through you most of the world will know. Attending the Mount Isa Aero Club's 1976 New Year's Eve party, no one noticed anything wrong with Foreman. With the turn of the new year, in 1977, Foreman decided to take his vengeance out on Con Air. On the morning of the 3rd of January 1977, Foreman trashed his apartment and piled up his remnants in a corner of his living room, creating what was described as an altar, with the atop adorned with his most prized possession, a trophy for topping his blue course at the Nationwide Aviation Space Academy with his logbook in front. He then drove 2,000 kilometres across Queensland, the Northern Territory and into Western Australia to Wyndham, having stopped overnight on the 3rd of January in Catherine in the Northern Territory. Wyndham is the most northern town in the Kimberley region, the northern part of Western Australia and is on the border with the Northern Territory. As of 2016, the city had a population of just 780 people. He spent the night in Wyndham and on the 5th of January 1977 arrived at Wyndham Airport, 5.6 kilometres southeast of Wyndham. He aimed to steal a large aircraft used by the Royal Flying Doctor Service of Australia, but could not get one going. The Royal Flying Doctor Service of Australia is an air medical service in Australia and is one of the largest and most comprehensive aeromedical organisations in the world with 79 aircraft in service as of 2021. Foreman stole a Beechcraft 58 Baron registration VHENA and flew it to Alice Springs, the head base of Conair. This flight would take four hours and he departed at 6am in the morning. On the final page of his logbook, he wrote the date, aircraft type, call sign, destination and suicide mission with the words V written on the left page and end written on the right page. According to a suicide note left in his Mount Isa apartment, Foreman's aim was to fly into Conair's complex at Alice Springs Airport with the aim of causing both the maximum amount of loss and hardship for the airline, as well as kill as many employees of Conair as possible. Foreman intended to hit the smoke room and target employees during their morning smoke break, hitting the complex at 10am. However, Foreman forgot that there was a one hour time difference between Western Australia and the Northern Territory. Reaching the airfield at Alice Springs at 11am local time, he broadcast the final message by radio. It's better to die with honour than to live without it. Echo November Alpha. He then set full power to both engines and aimed at the Connellan complex before plunging the aircraft into the centre of the building into the smoke room. The fuel tank of the Beechcraft 58 Baron's wing burst into flames and the blast ripped holes in the front and back of the office. Four people, including Foreman and his former supervisor Roger Connellan, were killed as well as engineers Marcus Cittoni and Ron Dimmock, all of whom died on impact. 19-year-old secretary Liana Nappi was badly burnt and died of her injuries in hospital five days later. Four other Conair employees were injured, some with burns to up to 75% of their body.
Had Foreman taken into account the one hour time difference between Western Australia and the Northern Territory, it is likely that his death toll would have been far greater, since most people had left the smoking room 5-10 to 10 minutes before he struck. Foreman's parents refused to have their son's remains returned to the United Kingdom having completely disowned him, and investigators were unable to locate them. He was buried at the Adelaide Springs General Cemetery within sight of Roger Connellan's grave. In many ways, Conair never recovered from this attack and was sold to East West Airlines on the 14th of March 1980, going into liquidation shortly thereafter. East West Airlines itself ceased operations on the 31st of October 1993 before being sold to what was then Australia's second biggest airline, Ansett Australia, which after 65 years in operation would be shut down on the 13th of September 2001. A second version, Ansett Australia Mark II, would fold shortly thereafter on the 4th of March 2002. Edward Connellan was seen as a pioneer of aviation in the Northern Territory and passed away on the 26th of December 1983. Thank you for watching, please do yourself a favour and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to inform you when new videos come out. Also why not hit that like button and leave a nice comment, it helps more than you know and your support is truly appreciated. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet and have an amazing day.